of the following which classic triad characterizes preeclampsia right so when we talk about uh, the characteristic triad of preeclampsia then we will keep it as hypertension protein urea and non dependent edema right so remember this is non dependent edema it, no, it doesn't have to be a pitting pedal edema right and when we talk about non dependent edema you typically see it in the face even on the limbs right so that's the classic triad please remember here edema is not required to make a diagnosis okay of preeclampsia it is a characteristic finding but it is not required to make a diagnosis right protein urea again is not mandatory you can make a diagnosis of preeclampsia even in the absence of protein urea if signs of end organ damage are present right so if there is no protein urea but there are signs of end organ damage it will still be preeclampsia and remember the five things included in end organ damage right so i hope you remember that it is serum creat more than 1.1 platelet count less than 1 lakh right then liver enzymes more than twice the normal value right then pulmonary edema and finally cerebral or visual symptoms right so if any of this is present along with high bp then it is still preeclampsia okay which of the following can cause both primary and secondary amenorrhea so this is going to be anorexia nervosa yes it can cause both primary and secondary she hands usually causes secondary amenorrhea the classic history would be a patient with massive hemorrhage or a postpartum hemorrhage presents with inability to lactate that is the most common presentation so failure to lactate is the most common presentation whereas the second most common presentation of shehan's is amenorrhea ashermann syndrome again will present with secondary amenorrhea whereas kalman's will present with primary amenorrhea okay then the next one is embryo reduction for multiple pregnancy is done at 11 to 13 weeks right so this is done under ultrasound guidance where we will inject kcl into the thorax of the fetuses so this is done when there are multiple babies inside and you want to improve the outcome of the pregnancy that's when you do embryo reduction and you will reduce it to twin pregnancies you will never reduce it to single ton okay then during the performance of an abdominal hysterectomy for uterine leiomyoma an inadvertent cystostomy is created in the dome of the bladder what do you do so when such a condition happens what you are supposed to do is that you will do a one or two layered closure with absorbable suture and then you will drain the bladder for about 48 to 72 hours right in case there is an injury near the trigone okay where you can injure the ureteric orifices then in that case there may be need for passage of a retrograde ureteral catheters right to identify the injuries and sometimes it may you may even require ureteral reimplantation but for these kind of simple injuries it's simply a one or two layer closure with an absorbable suture and then drainage right okay all the following are risk factors for placental abruption except heroin abuse so a lot of drugs have been implicated in abruption but not heroin cocaine is the typical drug which has been associated with placental abruption advanced maternal age increasing parity cigarette smoking are all risk factors for abruption prom as well as polyhydramnios are also risk factors preeclampsia and trauma are very important risk factors for abruption previous history of abruption is the most important risk factor why because it has a recurrence risk of up to 15% right so the single most common risk important risk factor is previous history of abruption then thrombophilias of pregnancy okay thrombophilias of pregnancy as well as folic acid deficiency 
have been linked to abruption right then presents antenatal clinic she is 20 weeks 4.5 4 kg 6 kg's baby right then we have done a gtt for her she is 156 so she is labeled as gdm now complications of this condition are all except congenital malformations in the fetus this is what you see with pre-gestational diabetes not with gestational diabetes why because it is hyperglycemia which is fetotoxic and in gestational diabetes this hyperglycemia happens beyond 20 weeks so there is uh, usually no malformation so malformations is a feature of pre-gestational diabetes the most common being cardiovascular followed by the neural tube defects right and please remember within the cardiovascular system the most common will be VSD right whereas within the cardiovascular system the most specific is TGA in general most specific anomaly is caudal regression syndrome right